So when we are repressing our emotions, there is, there is, there is lots of consequences that can happen. So we're just going to go through some of these, um, but it's important to, to recognize that there's so many factors that can be involved when we are um, repressing our emotions. So the first one is discomfort and not knowing what is bothering you. So what happens a lot of the time is when people are repressing their emotions, because they, they become detached from them, they often don't actually know what is bothering them. What is the cause? Why am I feeling this way? And so it kind of feels like you don't really know yourself. You don't really know what's happening. And that can be a very confusing and anxious place to be. So, you know, when we um, repress our emotions, it can have that real impact on us in terms of identity and understanding. Why do I feel that way? The second thing is it can cause confusion or despair as emotions keep resurfacing. So one of the things about emotions is because their role and their goal is to come up and to be expressed and released, they are continuously going to be coming up until you allow it to be released. Now, when you are repressing them, meaning you're deliberately trying to push them down and contain them, what happens is you have this ongoing battle because they're going to keep resurfacing and keep resurfacing. And it's just like a volcano. Eventually, it's going to blow. The third thing is that when people have repressed emotions, over time, as these, as these emotions build up, people can tend to lash out with anger, especially without warning. And so, as I was saying earlier, it could be that someone's just stepped on your foot or someone's just said the wrong thing to you. But because you're carrying and you're holding so much previous offenses and so much anger from the past, that people can just lash out, sometimes without warning. And it can have catastrophic effects in some cases. Another one is feeling uncomfortable in your own skin. So people don't know themselves. People don't feel comfortable even being in their own skin because being in their skin means that they're experiencing these emotions that they don't want to deal with and what they don't want to address. And so it, it, it's like if you imagine if you, you was caught in the rain and you're all wet and then you're sitting down on a chair, which is all wet, it feels uncomfortable. Well, that's what it feels like internally because you're not, becoming equated with yourself because you're repressing your emotions. Another one is that people often can start to use substances to avoid or escape their emotions. So people may use things like alcohol, which is the depressant, because it slows down your central nervous system, which consists of your brain and your spinal cord. And as a result, everything is slowed down, including how you experience your emotions. And so people can sometimes um, get hooked on substances, you know, or start to use substances to help them to cope or manage. Another one is that people can end up picking a scapegoat to bear the brunt of their oppressed emotions. And so often that scapegoat can be someone who doesn't deserve it, someone who is not the cause of why you're feeling the way you feel, but that happens to be the person you take it out on. And often that's not intentional. You know, so it, whether it's a parent, a brother, a sister, a child, a friend, a teacher, whoever it may be, but people often find there's someone who they let it out on. It also causes physical distress. So the repressed energy is lodged in the body where it can be experienced as physical tension or physical numbness or lack of vitality. So the thing to remember here is, is that 
Your emotions are energy. Emotions is short for energy plus motion. And so when you are trying to stop this energy from flowing, it then has to go in. And so what it then starts to do is manifest itself within the body, with tension, with migraines, with lack of vitality. Yeah. And so all of these things is ways that your body is telling you there is something different you need to do. Just like if you put your hand on a hot heater and you leave it there, the sensations and the feelings and the numbness is telling you something came right here and you need to let go of that heater. And so our emotions does the same thing internally. And then unfortunately, our body starts to malfunction and we start to experience those things. And that's why when we looked at the slide earlier about how certain emotions, if they're not addressed, can actually affect our well-being, our stomach, our hearts, our mind and stuff like that. It also causes tension and conflict within. So basically, you can be at war with yourself. You are fighting against your feelings. You are trying to slay your emotions. And your, most, your emotions want to break free. So they are fighting back. And so there is like this tension and this conflict within the never ending battle. And so people can walk around experiencing their World War Three on a daily basis because they are continuously repressing their emotions. And then your perceptions can become distorted. And as a result, people react inappropriately in situations. So what basically happens there is that in life, we don't see situations as they are. We see them as we are. So if you are repressing and holding a whole load of anger, it's going to be a lot easier for you to get angered by something else. If you have certain fears that you're trying to repress and not talk about or address, it's going to be a lot easier for other things to fear you. And so what happens is it distorts the perception of the individual in whatever area it is that they're trying to repress. And then as a result, they will act inappropriately in situations. It also prevents you from understanding yourself fully. Because emotions are there to help you to understand who you are. The deep recesses of who you are, what really goes on. Because all of us have three lives. We have our public life, those things that we let everyone know about. We have our private life, those things that we only let a few about. But then we have our secret life. And those are the things that go on in our head, in our hearts, in our minds that we don't tell anyone about. And if you are not allowing yourself to understand yourself fully because you are not engaging with your emotions, it's the same way as if you had a partner and you didn't really talk to them and you didn't engage with them, you wouldn't fully understand who they are. And so it prevents people from fully understanding themselves. And the key thing is that it affects all relationships. Because if you are not engaged, if you're not at peace with yourself, if you're not fully understanding yourself, if you're not able to express yourself because you are repressing those emotions, it's going to affect every relationship in our lives. Because what you can't do for yourself, you can't do for others. And so what happens is people tend to avoid things. They tend to stay away from certain types of conversations. Um, if anyone's bringing up a point that that individual finds that they don't ever want to address in themselves, they will avoid questioning, they will avoid situations, and they will cut conversations short. And so it has a massive impact on relationships when we are repressing our emotions.